back to uploading. I appreciate those of you that have watched or commented or shared. Uh, trying to put some truth out there in this messy world. Um, turn your Bibles this morning to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. And uh, I was trying to figure out what uh, the Lord wanted me to preach on today. And I switched through a few subjects and kept coming back to a couple of things that somebody said to me recently. So our sermon today, our subject, our, our question is, <coughs> what is the meaning of life? Why do we live and breathe? Why are we alive here on earth? It's a question that a lot of people spend whole lifetimes, careers, years trying to figure it out, try to add meaning, try to add ex explanation. And those of us that have put our faith in Christ, those of us that have read the word of God and believe it, well, we know why we're here. And we know what the purpose of life is. But so many people today are just lost and confused and wandering around in darkness. And I want us to look at that today in the, uh, from the scriptures and find what it is that God wants from us, why God created us. And, and what it is that it gives life meaning. So before we get started, let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for the chance to come and learn more about your word. Lord, I ask today that you help me to say what you want me to say. To read the right scriptures so that people would grow in learning and understanding. Lord, help me to get out of your way and for you to speak through me. For people to see Christ through me. Lord, help us today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, the Bible says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him, Male and female created he them. All right. So that, that explains where we came from, if you believe it. Now, we are not created in the image of God in the sense that God has ten fingers, ten toes, and eyeballs. We are created in the image of God that we are immortal souls. I... Do not have a soul. I am a soul. I have a body. My soul drives around this. Uh, I drive around this meat skeleton thing that, that works pretty well. But you are made in the image of God. His image is an eternal being. My friends, you are an eternal being, and you will live forever or die forever. See, there's there's a realization that we brought grace into the world. God gave us. Our daughter and since she is born her soul will endure forever now I will spend my life Lord willing making sure she knows that Christ died for her and hopes that she'll trust that and go to heaven when she dies but when she dies she will either go to heaven or hell and so will all mankind so we know that God created human beings now there's up there's some People that would like to argue that. Uh, there are people that would like to tell you that he came from a monkey. And for the evolutionists out there, yes, I've studied enough to know that you're, you think that it's a common ancestor, an ape, not a monkey, because they're lower life forms. I've done all the research. None of it makes sense. You have no proof. Just be quiet. <laughs> so they said, well, you have no proof of, of, of God. Eh, wrong. I got more than you do. Sit down and be quiet. Why? Why do they deny the existence of God? Oh, well, we just we just happens to be. We've done the math on that. It's not possible. I won't go through it because it doesn't really matter, but if you do the math on that, the odds of us being an accident 
are so astronomically small, it's not possible. But the odds of there being a design, an intelligent designer and creator of the Earth, an all-powerful all being, are like one in three, statistically. And so one of three things happen. This, this, or this. Okay, so you've got impossible or one in three by, by the math odds, which is not one in three. It's, it's uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, so it's three and three. <laughs> but people will ignore God because they don't want to acknowledge him. So God creates humans. Humans are terrible things. We're flawed. We're petty. We're messy. Even tiny humans, so messy. The amount of mess this thing creates, you would not believe. Why would God make humans knowing what we would be? Uh, Brother Mike, turn to Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. When you get there, wave at me. God created man for his own reason. It is not our not ours to question our place to question what God's reasonings are. You there, Brother Mike? Read it nice and loud. Revelation 4.11. Yes, sir. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things. And for thy pleasure, they are and were created. So God created everything because it pleased him to do so. <clears throat> All right. There's a, a famous celebrity, Bill Nye, when asked, Mr. Nye, uh, why do you think we were created? He goes, well, I don't know. That's the great question of life. <clears throat> We all wonder why we create, well, you know, why why we exist, why we evolved this way, what we're here for. You don't have an answer? No, no one has an answer. Well, we do have an answer. We do have an answer. The Bible tells us we are created for the pleasure of God, and it pleased Him to do so. Now, God receives glory by our creation. See, look, there's an awful lot of people out there not glorifying God. They don't praise God or acknowledge God. But the Bible tells us God is honored and glorified whether they believe in or participate or not. Brother Mark, would you turn to Luke chapter 19 for me? Luke 19, verse 14. All right, you ready? Yes, sir. The uh, Bible says, And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. So if we didn't praise God, creation itself would. God is glorified. And Brother Mark surprised me there until I remembered the verses are on the board. <laughs> Everyone can now turn to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. I, I thought for a moment he was that far ahead of me in my sermon and then realized I, I, my, my cards are on the table instead of uh, close to the best. Romans chapter 1 and verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. No, God didn't create us. We just happen to be. Verse 19. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Amen. That's important. It says that the invisible things are understood by the things that are made, so that they are without excuse. Can you see someone's salvation? <clears throat> no. What did what did uh, what did Jesus tell Nicodemus? It says the wind bloweth where it listeth. Now here is the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh or whither it goeth. In other words, you know it's there. But where's the where's the proof of it? Proofs in here in His Word. But. We have so much evidence of God's power that he says we're without excuse. Right. Verse 21, 
Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. And their foolish hearts was darkened. <laughs> Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. I had a conversation with a friend this week. We were talking about people that have spent so much time trying to prove how smart they are. That now when they talk, I don't understand a word they say. Da, 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 da. That's, that's nonsense. Where, where, where did the wisdom go? You used to sound wise. Now you sound like you've got screws loose. Now, folks, I may think I'm smart, but I'm not going to tell you that listen to me because I'm smart. I'm not. In God, I'm dummy. All I got is Jesus. There, there, are, there are deep things of the Word of God. I don't know. All I know is Jesus. Now, I've got opinions. You want my opinion? I'll give it to you like any person. But all I know is Jesus. Jesus died for me. He died for you. And that's all I'll tell you for certain. I may have opinions about angels and demons. And I may have opinions about uh, the creation of the world. Or whatever else you might find in the Bible. But if the Bible doesn't clearly state it out. It's just my opinion. You know what the Bible is extremely clear about? The blood of Jesus Christ. So if you ask me what I got, I got Jesus. And I got opinions after that. I can't I can't help you. Be wise. <clears throat> Wisdom's in here. See, so many people, they should become wise. They should be wise. <clears throat> Confessing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Verse 23, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like a like to corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness. Whew. Stop there for a second. God gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. What does it mean God gave them up? He withdrew restraint. He withdrew restraint. My dog is not the brightest bulb in the pack. I love him. He's cute. He's very loyal. He's very sweet. He is not smart. He likes to fight with the neighbor's dog. <clears throat> he gets hurt every time. If he sees the neighbor's dog, he'll try to take off. So I hold him. No, you'll go get hurt. What am I doing? I'm restraining him. No, you'll go get hurt. No, you'll go get hurt. <clears throat> You're too stupid to turn loose because you'll hurt yourself. Well, every once in a while, all right, go. Go get hurt. Why? I don't have the energy to deal with him. Maybe he needs to learn a lesson. Maybe I don't have the time. Maybe I'm dealing with something more important. All right, you're good. I ain't got time for this. Go, go get hurt. Gave him up. Now I go pick him up afterwards after he gets hurt and cries about it. But I, that's what I think of when it says here, he gave us up. We're straining so hard at the leash to go do something stupid. God goes, all right. Have it your way. That is the most dangerous thing any person can ever experience is when you finally get God to say, all right, have it your way. I'm going to step back and watch. Whew. Mm. That, that sends shivers down my spine. That should scare you. And you pull so hard against what God wants for you that he goes, okay. You think your way then. You believe your way. You do your thing. We'll see how that works for you. What does it say happens to him? <clears throat> they became fools verse 25 who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever amen turn to Isaiah 43 I've spoken to many people that think well I see that God must exist but God doesn't care about you what why would God care about you? There's all so many people. He, you pray to him, everybody else prays to him. It's like people going to a football match. Well, everybody on this side is going to pray to win. And everybody on this side is going to pray to win. God's going to count up the prayers. Whoever's got the most people praying for the football game is going to win. God doesn't work that way. Why, why would he care about you? First of all, you don't think God cares about football. Y'all haven't been to a football match in the South. <laughs> Second, The evidence that God cares about us, cares about you, 
is there, but if you're not looking, you won't see it. You go, oh, I've been told this one. Josh, you believe what you believe because that's what you were raised to believe. If you'd have been born in a different country, you'd been born into a different language, a different family, you'd believe whatever that is, and that wouldn't be any any better or worse than what you believe now. It's just what, how people are raised. I can see why people think that, but I don't believe what I believe because I was raised that way. There's tons of things I was raised to believe I no longer believe. There's tons of things I was taught as a child I no longer believe. I had some Sunday school teacher try to teach me that what was it uh, Jesus was only in the grave one night? I believed that for years and years and years. Oh well, the Jewish day was started at six and started at, you know, at, at midnight, and then it was three days. And he had some explanation. I believed that for years that it was a, just he was buried at night and rose again in the morning. No, I got old enough to study for myself and see that he was full of it, and he hadn't studied. So when I told him that, he believed it. <coughs> Folks, I don't believe what I believe because mommy told me. My mm -hmm. mom helped. I had a good mom. Taught me the Bible. Taught me to, to read the Bible. Taught me to, to trust what I read, that it was true. Taught me to take a very healthy grain of salt with things man said. Mm -hmm. But I believe because I can see it's true. God has showed me so many different things, so many different times over my life. And he cares. If you think about it, if your attention's been on God for any length of time, has he done something for you to help you out, to bless you, to answer your prayer, to lift, to comfort your heart? Well, Man. all the time. My list is so long, I don't remember them all. Verse uh, 1, Isaiah chapter 43. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. We are not random beings that got tossed out in an ant farm for God to watch. God sits next to us and holds our hand. <clears throat> Verse 2, when thou passest through the waters, I will... will I will be with thee, and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee, since thou wast precious in my sight. Thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Turn to Psalm chapter 8. <clears throat> Psalm chapter 8. Verse 1. O, o Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies. Thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the works of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, and the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passes through the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Verse 
verse 4, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that visiteth him, for thou hast made him a little lower than the angels? Who's that he's talking about? Jesus. Jesus. So if God didn't care, why would he send his only son? If God wasn't paying attention, who was Jesus? There's lots of people say that Jesus was just another person, just another man, that it was just a bunch of fairy tales made up. You know, God, God gave us his only son. Folks, I like y'all, but I wouldn't trade all y'all together for my only child. Y'all would do the same. <clears throat> How precious we are to God for him to send his son. Turn to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Beginning in verse 4, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. So not only did God make us, God loves us. God loves us is the theme of the Bible. <clears throat> Jesus Christ is the subject of the Bible, but the theme that goes in and out, the whole Bible. Does God care? God loves with a love that we don't even comprehend. Over and over again, we're told God loves us. God loves us. Verse 6. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. Does that sound like a God that wants you to go to hell? Does that sound like a God that doesn't care? Verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. In this broken world today, many people suffer from stress, anxiety, suicidal impulses and addictions, <clears throat> unhappiness that comes from lack of purpose and direction. It's because society is so fixated on itself and self-love that they become empty of all meaning. If you go out today and you try to find meaning in your life and the world, People will point you towards well. Let's have lots of relationships. Go out and meet lots of girls or lots of boys. That makes you special. Let's go out and make lots of money. If you're if you're rich and have all the things, then you'll feel fulfilled. People are told, first love yourself, and then you'll be worth loving. Then someone else can love you. No. We realize that God loves us. That self-loathing doesn't really work anymore. I'm a terrible sinner. But Christ died for me. The horribly lost world. <clears throat> but if they would realize that Christ died for them. Wouldn't be so dark. Tomorrow is not so bad. No matter how bad today is, if you know <clears throat> that you have a home in heaven. For the sake of time, let's, turn, let's jump down to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Beginning of verse 35. Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. He that believeth on me shall never thirst. 
But I said unto you that ye also have seen me, and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise <coughs> cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So this, this lost world, if they could see that they were created by God, created by a God that loves them, that his will is not that they perish, but have everlasting life. I think that would solve the depression and anxiety and the and the, the listlessness that they have. But people will latch on to anything else. In this dark world, they'll they'll chase after everything else. When there's a, a God that created them and loves them, and died for them. Wants them to wants them to go to heaven. You know, people attach an awful lot of importance to their happiness. They're like, well, this if I have this thing, it'll make me happy. If I have this person, it'll make me happy. If I do these things, then I will be happy. And over and over again, it doesn't work. <clears throat> there was a time in my life where I had broken up. I'd ended a relationship and was exceedingly unhappy mom will tell you i was not a happy person i was very very unhappy with what was going on in my life and i came to the conclusion well, why is your happiness important you broke up for the right reason you chose to do what you thought god wanted you to do and if that led to your unhappiness then you're not supposed to be happy that changed my point of view quite a bit. Said, okay, it is God's intention I'd be unhappy for a bit. Mm -hmm. That made it easier to, to bear. Now I got myself into the situation. Probably wasn't God's will that I got myself into the situation, but it's God's will I got out. So, the meaning of life, you won't find it out there. You'll find it in here. All these young people that want meaning or purpose or, or direction in life. The only place where you find life and life eternal is in Jesus Christ. Amen. So I hope that you'll have seen this morning from our scriptures that God made us. God made us for his glory. God wants us in heaven with him. But even if we choose not to, and he'll leave the choice up to you, even if we choose not to, God is still glorified. God is still on the throne and in charge. But he wants you in heaven, even wants you to be happy. We are commanded to believe, and then we are commanded to love one another. Folks, if you're unhappy, start taking care of other people. Start loving other people. Start telling other people that Jesus loves you. You will find happiness in loving other people way faster than you'll find happiness in loving yourself. So this morning, I'm going to leave you with this thought. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, Lord, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Dear Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for our church, our family, all the people here, Lord. We ask you to bless us as we go out this week and we go about our lives and our jobs. And Lord, help us as we try to reach those we care about. Help us as we try to learn. Help us as we, we preach to our loved ones and our family and those that we know need you. Bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.